going home, baby. We're home. Chills up and down my spine every time I see and hear old old glory slamming in the wind like that. In that video of the woman saying we can't do anything about it, she wasn't at the um, the American Embassy. I forget. I forget which embassy she was, but because of the war in Iran, I'm not sure if it has anything to do with Desert Storm. Um, Betty Mahmoudi was, I believe, in Iran from 85 to 86. Um, but because of the war, uh, the American embassy was dismantled. There was no American embassy at that time in Iran. If there was, she probably would have been able to get help, but there was no American embassy. Oh, I forget that. What flag that is. Um. So, we are going to watch a video of the real Betty Mahmoudi and we are going to hear her story. You mentioned your dad. She recounts her story in her best-selling book, Not Without My Daughter, and this moving book is now a movie starring Sally Field, and Betty is here with us today to talk about the movie and the experience. How are you? It's nice I'm to see fine, you again. You. Good to see you. How is Matab, your daughter? She's great. She's just doing very well, and she loves the movie, and I think it was a real catharsis for her. It probably answered some questions that I didn't realize were still there, and and she really says, thanks, Mom. She did turn to you and say that, didn't yeah, she? Yes, she did. How old is she now? Eleven. And how old was she when you, when this whole ordeal happened? When we went to Iran, she was four years old and she was six when we came back. Her memory is still strong of those oh, moments yes. and those she things? she still remembers that. What about her feelings for her father, given what she went through? She hated him when we came back. And during the escape, she said, I hate Daddy for doing this to us. She didn't have. That, that's that's crazy. I I, I can't imagine. I, I oof, chills. Much you know, positive to remember. And when I realized how bad it was, and that she even hoped he was dead or would die, I I didn't want her to grow up that way and think that he was always a, a monster, a vicious person, which he wasn't. He was a great father in this country. So I began telling. He was a great father in this country because this country does not have Sharia law. It's banned. Telling her, you know, the good times before Iran, reminding her. After a couple of months, finally, she remembered, and and I've encouraged her to. Um... And as you can see, Betty Mahmoudi held hostage in Iran by husband talk about him and, and it's okay to miss him. There have been a, a few times she has. We talk about Iran and, you know, she's half Iranian. I, I want her to be proud of that. This is um, kind of a critical time for this film to be released. Was that planned or well, would, one would think not because how would you know? Well, we started working on the film in June of 86. Yeah, 84 to 86. Whew. And of course, we didn't know this was going to happen today. And we got it on the screen as fast as we could. You know, we went through the writer's strike and several things over the months. But yeah. it is a critical time. And, you know, Matab and I lived through the daily air raids in Iran. And we knew what the war was like. So I have a lot of mixed emotions about today. Uh, tell us your story. You marry this man who is Iranian and a physician. And well, when you lived in this country, what was life like for you? He was a wonderful father. He, his, he was an anesthesiologist, so he could spend more time with us. That's what he, you know, he wanted to be in a field where he wasn't always at the hospital or in a clinic. And he and she does mention this. Um, he was. He was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. 
but um, when you're too perfect there's got to be something wrong and there certainly was and she does mention this he planned his life around us, very good uh, husband and father, and you know, treated me like a queen as soon as we went to Iran, which this was a forced vacation. I certainly wasn't looking forward to going. Why were you not looking forward? What was going on in your gut? Well, they were at war. I mean, they had just had a revolution, and they were at war, and, you know, all we're seeing is this crazy... Uh... Revolutionary war, yes. Let's, let's uh, little, do a little history. Sheik. Yeah, watch me blow that. Sheik of Iran. Oh, Iran. That's Sheik of Iran. Mohammad Reza Pavlavi. Monarchy abolished. So, from what I hear, um, Mohammad Reza, I guess he was a little laxed. He wasn't. That's what they're saying. He, um, her husband in the mo movie. It it talks about the revolution and how they overthrew threw him because they um, Reza was lax with Sharia law. I mean, I'm not saying it was Sodom and Gomorrah, but. It certainly wasn't the way it was in the time of Not Without My Daughter. <laughs> okay. Ayatollah that's running the country. So, uh, it wasn't the place to go for a vacation. I knew he needed to see his family. He hadn't seen them for 10 years. But for the first time in the 12 years I had known him, he was forcing me to do something, not giving me a choice. Could we then presume that this was a premeditated act to get you there and not let you come home? I'm sure it was. I asked him many times and he always denied it, but he took too many things with him uh, to set up a practice and everything else. Oh, he did take it with yeah. him. Did you know that he was taking those things? Oh, no, I Absolutely didn't know. Not, huh? um, you keep saying he was a good father. What kind of a husband was he? He was a great husband. He was. Uh, during the time of the revolution, um, well, I knew him for four years, and w during that time, before we, before we married, and we never even had the slightest argument. I guess that should have been a clue. <laughs> there was something wrong. But um, we were married, and then a couple years later, the revolution came around, the same time Matab was born. During that time, we had problems. I mean, he uh, hung a picture of the Ayatollah. He began practicing his religion, which he... So, practically, he held, he, uh, put up a picture of Hitler, or Karl Marx, or whatever lunatic around the house. Yeah, the sign's there, definitely. He hadn't before, and... But the thing is, with America... You can put a you can put a mark of the clan outside on your front yard or nicest flag. You can't do any you can't do anything about it. It's it's all in our First Amendment. It's not until something happens. And um get rid of all the alcohols in the house and start reading the packages, make sure everything is kosher, and all of a sudden our life changed. But he realized what was happening to our lives. It uh, created a great deal of pressure. All of a sudden, this is a different man that I married and that I had known for the last few years. So he agreed to leave it behind, and we went to move back to Michigan. And so four years before we went to Iran, 
we actually had a, a normal, happy life again. I remember reading in the book that as you were taking off on the plane, you were saying inside yourself, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Do you know? I knew it was wrong. I, di I felt I didn't have any choice. I, I felt, you know, when I went in 1984, I did it to save Matab mm -hmm. because I did go to an attorney, which was, I felt, the only alternative to this trip, and that was divorce. And I said, you know, I don't want to go to Iran. He's forcing me. Um, if I get a divorce, can I prevent him from having visitation with Matab? I certainly didn't want a divorce, and our marriage was happy, but it's just the idea that there's something wrong that he's not giving me a choice. You were afraid he'd take Matab. I with them. thought he would kidnap Matab if I didn't go. The, they told me there was no no judge in this country that would listen to me, and I had not heard of another case to support no. what my thinking. I can see on your face. It's hard for you to watch this. This is the most difficult scene in the film for me to watch. And I guess it took three times to watch this before I realized what it was. Um, that wasn't the most difficult time in real life. The most difficult time in real life is when Mata was taken away from me in Iran. But this scene, uh, I lost everything. You know, I lost my husband, I lost my best friend, and Mata lost her father. In that moment? In that moment. Did he beat you regularly in Iran? Yes. When you... In that moment. Did he beat you regularly in Iran yes. when you moment in that moment did he beat you regularly in Iran yes. when you like when I mean there he well so the woman reporter just asked and I'm sure you heard it did he beat you in Iran and Betty Mahmoudi says yes There is no domestic it's abuse in um, in Muslim countries. Like you could set your wife on fire. Don't blame the wife. Here it began. I mean, it began instantly when he told me that we couldn't come back. And during that first two months, I probably initiated a lot of it because I wasn't nice to anybody. I mean, I was very angry, and I was calling everybody names. Well, no woman them. ever initiates abuse. I, I mean, we shouldn't I, No, no one initiates abuse. So, you know, you're liars, you, you can't do this to us, and you're all a bunch of hypocrites. And but after two months, I decided that wasn't going to get me out of Iran, and I started being nice to everyone. And during the rest of the time, the next 16 months, I killed everybody in the country with kindness. And even then, I was beaten, but not as often. Talking, and um, you have two boys from a previous marriage, and one of them was old enough, you were telling me, to take care of himself, but the other younger one, you dropped at mom's and said, I'll be back in two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, how hard was it for those boys? both of them it was very difficult and even today they've never dealt with the story they've never read the book or watched an interview and I took for granted that they're gonna go to the premiere of the movie with me and and when they told me they didn't want to I was hurt initially but uh, my younger son cried and he said you don't know what it was like to be here and not know if you were dead or alive I couldn't sleep at night I cried every Is your whole family full of dits, says Chantal? I, I mean, did you burn so I, I, I'm, and I'm not trying to be mean, I'm being serious, I'm really being serious, but... When I wanted to join the military, my mom said, No, you're not going to Iraq. <laughs> you're not going, you're not going over there, and um... I did, I did lose a cousin in Afghanistan, his name was Michael, they literally waited for his, uh, his, uh, jeep, and they waited and they blew him up. just what your mother must if she's had any brain cells herself what she must be thinking or if you just 
were just, I'm sorry, I have to say this, if such a garbage child, does she even care? Very nice. Talk about um, how you got out. Um, what, what, can you encapsulate that for us? Right. After a couple of months, and I, I decided that I'm going to be nice to everybody and, and eventually gain their trust, pretend I'd accepted my life in that country, and I would be able to go out and make some contacts. That's exactly what happened. Because for a long time, you were housebound. I was housebound. During the whole 18 months, I was, but occasionally, after a while, I got to go out and buy food and had to account for my time. But it's during this time that I trusted total strange ir All right, before I forget, so, I'm born, I'm a born again Christian, and the, con the conflict, the conflict has nothing to do with, uh, uh, I, even before Foodie got on the plane and went to Kuwait, I was not her biggest fan. It has nothing to do with her so-called religion. Um, this, um, the Muslim faith is not... A <laughs> it's not loving and, and, and graceful and... It is in the Americas because there's no Sharia law in in a foodie's country of birth or mine. It certainly is a loving religion there because you can't beat the shit out of anyone. You can't beat your wife. You can't really beat your kids. It is banned in Kuwait, and e and or arbitra ar arbitrated only under Ontario law. Various states in the United States have outlawed Sharia, but it, of course it's loving. Yeah. You don't get your butt whipped. Nine Eleven, ISIS, Al Qaeda. That that's the Muslim faith because of how we are living and there's quite a few things I don't like about our country quite a few but it's none of the Muslims business what we do in our country and they don't always respect that once again um. It took me quite a few years to realize what really happened on 9-11. I, uh, really don't like to talk about it because it did, it did, uh, it did cause me to have PTSD. Maybe one day. I'll give you one, though. I'll give you one. One little hint of why it's not what they say it is. If you look at demolition photos and when the Twin Towers quote unquote collapsed, they are identical in how they come down. If those if the World Trade Center came down the way it should have came down, uh, it would not have fallen into one nice little pile. And that's where I'm going to stop talking about 9-11.
Iranian men. I mean, these people were Muslims too, but they weren't the fundamentalists like the family that was holding me hostage. I tr fundamentalists. So the person that helped her was, for example, the Muslims in Canada and the United States and the family that was held, holding her hostage were the uh, pilots on 9-11. trusted total strangers on the street and I told them that, you know, I, I have to escape from Iran. I have to go back home with my daughter. And, and people felt a great deal of sympathy. People did a lot of things for us. There's no way in the movie to get all of these things in. But they risked their lives for us. They offered us large amounts of money without any security. You can pay me back someday in America. And they were great. I mean, they were wonderful. And the, fam the people outside this family, although they were Muslim, lived a much different lifestyle. So I certainly hope people would leave this film realizing that you can't judge all of Iran by the family that was holding us hostage. Yeah, and we'll talk about the kind of criticism the film is getting in that regard. Um, but who helped you and who got you into that car and hid you and crossed the border? I initially met a shopkeeper who let me use his phone and, and he had been former Savak and he talked to friends and they talked to friends and they talked to friends and over the months there were many people involved. But I finally found a man uh, who I didn't, uh, you know, put all my eggs in one. Hmm. Let's see if I could actually find this. Oh yeah, that asshole. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is before, uh, he was, uh, before they, uh, went to Iran. Let's see. Oh! <laughs> I've actually seen this video. Oh, it's it's funny. It's fu <laughs> well. Why don't she just lose weight? <laughs> why won't you just lose weight? Oh, is this it? Not. Here's some of it. But first, I must call Betty. Come. My brother wants you to call your husband and delay him. But first, I must call Hussein and tell him you're safe. I forgot to be bunny. What? I forgot to be bunny. Honey, do you want to go home to America? Mata, stop crying. Stop crying. Listen now. I actually like this part. She actually gives her daughter a choice. She actually gives her daughter a choice. And I like this part. If we go back and get Toby Bunny, we have to stay there with Daddy. Now, do you want that? I don't know I see my Daddy again. Oh, that's heart... Oh. oh. That's heartbreaking. Oh, yes. Um. Ah. Uh, not without... My daughter. Um. Sayad. 
Yeah, they called him Moody. <laughs> Certainly was Moody. All right. Uh. Oh, dysentery. Whew. Anyways. <clears throat> I'm trying to find it. He uh, threatened his wife, and he was immediately barred from the United States. Let's see. Uh... Kind of. <laughs> renal disease. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is renal disease the butt? Oh no, that's rectal. That would be rectal. Anyways, um. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Life since estrangement. After returning home, Betty filed for divorce. According to Betty Moody, the night before the 9-11 attacks, I was informed that Moody had a green card and was not only back in the U.S., but he was just a few blocks away from my house in Michigan. After he was eventually placed on a terrorist list, he was never allowed back in the U.S. Loving, loving religion. Piece of garbage. I don't know. Stop crying now. Now you're saying, well, these people helped. And it's so nice in America. There's two. There's two different versions of the Quran. There's the Arabic Quran, and then there's the Quran that is all the other languages. If you look at a, a real Arabic Quran, it's thick. It's, it's thick at Stephen King's The Stand because it has all the dirty, nasty things that the Muslim faith does not want to get, get out. 9-11 is the Muslim faith. 9-11 is the Muslim faith. That's what the Muslim faith says to do to infidels. I'm sorry, it's just... That's what that religion is all about. And it's not nice. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but it's not nice. I was cursed by Muslims when I tried to talk to them. Not nice. The Nice ones are the ones in countries that don't have Sharia law. And uh, if, if you want to know more, if you want to know the real truth about the Muslim faith, I'd highly, once again, Dr. David Wood. That's how I found out. I'm sorry, but red is not blue. Red is red. I love you. I love you. You'll be my big brave girl. All right. Oh. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't find the full escape, but <sighs> I 
Once again, Chantal. Kuwait has British common law, French civil law, Egyptian civil law, and Sharia. Iran. Ooh. 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 Blasphemy. Can't do that. Okay. Ooh. Oof. Ah, Iraq. Sharia is the main source of the legislation. Hey y'all, we're going to Iraq. Yeah, um, no. Right, so. This is, this, that, that's pretty, uh, not without my daughter is what happened, is what, what could happen. Oh, thank God, once again, thank God you do not have a child, so, and I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, God forbid you did need to get ghost. <laughs> Bye, y'all. See ya. You can. You're very lucky to have been bought, brought, b born in Canada. Very lucky indeed. It's time to go home. You could make up some story. Hey, you know. You know, uh. My diabetes, I should really get home and, uh... But, um... Kuwait is not that bad. Compared to, um... Not without my daughter took place in Iran. And if you're doing border hops for your visa, <sighs> Brunei, ooh, <sighs> oof. Let's see, you love Qatar. Let's see what Qatar says. Ah, uh, ooh. <laughs> They, they still flog in uh, Qatar for drinking alcohol. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> the 86, uh, the women when they don't sleep with Muslim men, when, when they, uh, they sleep with non-Muslim men. Oh, oh, a hundred lashes. Oh. You said you'd love, love, love to go to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is based entirely on Sharia. Let's take a look at what Sharia is, actually. I don't know if uh, you truly understand what Sharia is. Sharia means Islamic law, based on old age concepts since the early Islamic state of the 8th and 9th centuries. Sharia always existed alongside other n normative systems. Okay.
Yeah, so... Practices... Fasting, pilgrimage... Oneness of God... Beliefs... Culture and society... Moral teachings... Ah, oh, contemporary usage. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Midyar Muta. Mm. So, yeah. Oh. Oh. What happens? Oh, let's try spelling that correctly, shall we? If you do not pray. Uh, oh, I apologize, I'm getting a little sleepy. If you pray, if you pray with your back turned to Mecca. A Muslim must pray facing Mecca. <gasps> mm. Ooh. Agreed and pray with their back to Mecca would be sacrilegious. Can woman rap? Can Muslim woman? Let's try that. Muslim woman rap. Can he be a rapper as a Muslim? Ah, uh, yeah. United States. Are followers of Islam. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, number of hip hop artists in the United States are follow or follow followers of Islam. Although some Muslims believe some or most forms of music are haram. These artists do not necessarily consider themselves as practicing Orthodox Muslims. Chantal is supposedly a practicing Muslim. A 
According to the Irish Times, a majority of Muslims follow the view taken by modern scholars such as Yusuf al Dawi that music is forbidden only if it leads Okay, that's... I don't know, that was a little weird. <sighs> okay. So pretty much this is all saying singing Madonna is a, a big no-no. Okay, so we pretty much all caught up. Chantel's being a bad girl? I think so too. I think so too. But fortunately, I don't think she's a... Um, I mean... <laughs> I used to love playing pretend on the playground when I was four years old, too. But, um, she'll be 40 at the end of the month. It's time to, uh, take off your Mary Janes and take a walk.